Ah, Saudi Arabia, the land of endless sand dunes, scorching sun, and, oh yes, more money than anyone knows what to do with. Who needs the rich green valleys of Tuscany or the bustling streets of Tokyo when you can have miles of desert and, more importantly, a treasure trove of oil beneath it? Let's be real. Saudi Arabia is like that kid in school who didn't have to study because they had all the cheat codes. Oil is their cheat code. The Saudis have been sitting on this liquid gold mine for decades, and they've played their cards well. Or at least, they've played the card that says, keep drilling. Let's not forget that back in the early 20th century, Saudi Arabia was a vast stretch of land, mostly desert, with tribes scattered across it. Not exactly the kind of place you'd expect to rise to global prominence. But then, lo and behold, a bunch of American geologists showed up, scratched the surface of the Arabian Peninsula, and discovered oil. And not just any oil, I'm talking about oceans of it. It was as if someone had found the world's largest piggy bank buried under the sand. The Saudis hit the jackpot without even knowing they were playing the game. And just like that, the course of the country's history changed forever. Overnight, Saudi Arabia went from being a largely unknown, underdeveloped land to becoming one of the most strategically important countries in the world. And with oil came power. Lots of it. Let's talk about how powerful Saudi Arabia is. Some might say that in a showdown with the United States, they wouldn't stand a chance. But is that really the case? Let's consider the fact. Saudi Arabia has one of the largest defense budgets in the world. They spend billions on military equipment, fighter jets, tanks, missiles, you name it. If it goes boom or can fly at Mach 2, they've probably bought it from the US or some other Western ally. And here's the kicker. A lot of that equipment is top-notch. The Saudis have some of the most advanced military hardware money can buy. The problem, of course, is not in the buying, it's in the using. Let's just say their military track record isn't exactly stellar. But who needs a winning streak when you can just keep upgrading your arsenal, right? The real power of Saudi Arabia, however, isn't in its military might. Oh no, it's in its economic leverage. How do you think they became such good friends with the US and other Western powers? It's all about that sweet, sweet oil. They don't need to fight the US because they already have them wrapped around their oily little finger. They've got the fuel that powers the world. And as long as that's the case, countries like the US will keep sending over dignitaries with smiles on their faces and hands outstretched. You think anyone in Washington wants to upset the apple cart? Or should I say the oil barrel? One wrong move and gas prices back home skyrocket faster than you can say energy crisis. Now, Saudi Arabia isn't just content with being the oil kingpin. They've got a master plan called Vision 2030. Oh, you've heard of it? Of course you have. It's the grand strategy to diversify their economy and prepare for a future where oil might not be king. You see, someone in Riyadh had an epiphany. Maybe we should have something to fall back on when the oil wells run dry. A wise thought, really, even if it's about a century late. So what's on the agenda? Tourism, entertainment, high-tech industries, basically everything that's the opposite of oil extraction. They're even building a futuristic megacity called NEOM. Picture a city that looks like it was designed by someone who binge-watched every sci-fi movie ever made. They're promising flying taxis, robots that do your chores, and zero carbon emissions. It sounds like a utopia, right? Or maybe just a really ambitious SimCity game. Let's not get too carried away with this Vision 2030, though. For all the grand plans, there are some pretty significant hurdles. You can't just snap your fingers and turn a country into a global tourism hub, especially when there are, well, certain restrictions, 
alcohol, for example, isn't on the menu. And, call me crazy, but that might be a deal breaker for some tourists. Also, there's the small matter of cultural and societal norms. Saudi Arabia is trying to open up and modernize, but that's a tall order in a place where change tends to happen at a glacial pace. They've introduced some reforms, like letting women drive, finally, and loosening some restrictions on entertainment. But there's a long road ahead and it's filled with speed bumps and potholes the size of, well, let's just say they're substantial. Speaking of reforms, let's not forget that they're coming from a pretty low starting point. Remember, this is a country where, until recently, women needed permission from a male guardian to travel or get a job. And while things are changing, it's more like a crawl than a sprint. But hey, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Or in this case, Riyadh. And who knows, maybe one day Saudi Arabia will be a beacon of progress and equality in the region. For now though, they're taking baby steps. Very cautious, careful baby steps. But let's talk about why Americans, yes, Americans, would want to move to Saudi Arabia. Seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? I mean, the land of the free and the home of the brave heading over to a place where freedoms are, shall we say, a bit more restricted. But there's a method to this madness. First off, there's the money. Oh, the money. Tax-free salaries, plush housing allowances, and all the perks that come with working in a country that wants to attract foreign talent. For some Americans, the idea of living in Saudi Arabia is like striking gold. No federal income tax, no state tax, no social security deductions. It's like Christmas every month when that paycheck hits the bank. Of course, you might have to trade in some personal freedoms for that extra cash, but isn't that a small price to pay for financial freedom? I mean, who wouldn't want to live in a luxury compound with a pool and a gym while raking in a tax-free salary? But it's not just the money. For some, it's about adventure. Yes, you heard that right, adventure. The chance to experience a culture that's so different from their own, to live in a place where history is not just something in textbooks, but something you can see and touch. They get to experience a different way of life, learn new customs, and perhaps gain a different perspective on the world. And if we're being honest, there's also a bit of a thrill in saying, I lived in Saudi Arabia. It's the ultimate conversation starter at dinner parties. Oh, you spent a summer in Europe? How quaint. I lived in Riyadh for three years. And let's not overlook the fact that many Americans are drawn to Saudi Arabia for the sheer scale of the projects happening there. From NEOM to the Red Sea Project, there are massive infrastructure projects and developments that offer unparalleled opportunities to work on something truly groundbreaking. For engineers, architects, and business professionals, it's a chance to be part of something big, something that could change the face of the country and perhaps the region. However, it's not all sunshine and roses, or rather, blazing sun and sand dunes. Living in Saudi Arabia does come with its fair share of challenges. The cultural differences are significant, and adjusting to a different way of life isn't always easy. There are strict laws and social norms that must be respected, and for some, that can be a bit of a culture shock. Not to mention the fact that the climate is, to put it mildly, brutal. Summer temperatures regularly soar above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and for those who aren't used to living in what feels like a giant outdoor sauna, it can be quite an adjustment. But, as they say, every rose has its thorns, and every expat has their reasons. For some, the opportunity to live and work in Saudi Arabia is too good to pass up, even if it means giving up a few creature comforts. And for others, it's a chance to experience a unique culture and way of life that they might never have the opportunity to see otherwise. And then there's the question of power. How powerful is Saudi Arabia, really? It's a question that's been asked time and time again. 
economically they wield significant influence, particularly in the global energy markets. When Saudi Arabia speaks, the oil markets listen. A single word from Riyadh can send prices soaring or plummeting, which is more power than most countries could ever dream of. And let's not forget their strategic alliances. Saudi Arabia has some powerful friends. Friends who also happen to be very dependent on that oil supply. But it's not just about oil. Saudi Arabia has been flexing its muscles in other ways too. They're becoming more involved in regional politics, taking a more assertive stance on the global stage, and trying to position themselves as a leader in the Arab world. They're investing in technology, in sports, in entertainment. They're hosting international summits and trying to shape the narrative. They want to be seen as more than just an oil-rich kingdom. They want to be seen as a player, a power broker, or a Giovanni Navalta.